Hi, lab assistant. Welcome to the yogurt section of the dairy processing plant. It appears that our latest batch of yogurt might have been contaminated by some undesirable bacteria. Before you start, there are basic safety procedures that need to be followed in all labs. Wash your hands before and after handling the materials. Wear gloves and safety glasses. Don't eat or drink in the lab. Be aware of dangling jewelry, loose clothing, or long hair that might get caught in equipment. Clean equipment after use to avoid the possibility of contaminating the next person who uses it. Always strictly follow the instructions given. All yogurt has bacteria in it since yogurt is made by adding specific bacteria to milk. These bacteria are beneficial to humans. Unfortunately, undesirable bacteria like Salmonella or E. coli can also end up in yogurt. These bacteria can make people very sick. Salmonella and E. coli. Many subspecies of the genus Salmonella cause infections in humans. For example, Salmonella and teratitis causes foodborne illness. Escherichia coli, E. coli, is commonly found in the lower intestines of warm-blooded animals. Most E. coli strains are harmless, but some, such as E. coli 0157H7, can cause serious foodborne illness in humans. To help us identify bacteria, we look at them under the microscope using a technique called gram staining. This is what plain, good yogurt looks like. Notice the uniform texture and color. Now take a look at this yogurt. See how the whey and water are separating? Are those air bubbles forming near the bottom of the bottle? These may be signs of contamination. Why are air bubbles a sign of contamination? When bacteria grow, they produce gases. Air holes appearing at the bottom of a yogurt container indicate the presence of an undesirable bacteria. This yogurt looks suspicious, but to tell if it is contaminated, we need to get a much closer look. Let's collect yogurt samples and prepare them for viewing under the microscope by doing a gram stain. In the gram staining process, we will use different chemicals to stain bacteria that are in the yogurt. Then we'll look at them under the microscope. The bacteria will be stained different colors depending on what type they are. Gram staining. Hans Christian Gram devised this technique in the 1880s to make bacteria more visible in stained sections of lung tissue. Today the technique is used as a tool to differentiate gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria as a first step to determining the identity of a bacterial sample. Bacteria that stain a pink or reddish color like this are called gram-negative, and their presence means the yogurt is contaminated. Bacteria that are used to make yogurt from milk stain purple. They look like this in a microscope and are called gram-positive. Pink bacteria are called gram-negative. Why do bacteria stain pink or purple? The stains used in gram staining react with components of the cell wall of the bacteria. The cell walls of gram-positive bacteria have a thick layer of peptidoglycan, which binds with crystal violet stain. Gram-negative bacteria contain very little peptidoglycan, so the crystal violet stain does not securely bind to their cell walls. These bacteria can be counterstained using safranine after the crystal violet is washed away with alcohol. We are going to gram stain samples of the yogurt so we can see what kinds of bacteria are present. All right, let's prepare our slides for gram staining. To prevent bacteria from contaminating our work area, we have wiped down the table with a 70% ethanol solution. We will also light a Bunsen burner to sterilize the inoculating loops we'll use later and help maintain a sterile working environment. You're going to use a striker to light the Bunsen burner. The gas is turned on low already, so bring the striker to the Bunsen burner with the flint side facing down and squeeze the striker to create sparks. Bring the striker to the burner to light it. Draw a circle on the slide with a permanent marker. 
This indicates where the small sample of yogurt will be placed. Turn the slide over so the markings are on its underside. Click and drag on the slide to draw a circle in the center of the slide. As in the previous scene, click and drag on the slide to label it with the name of the sample source, for example, yogurt. This will prevent confusion between this slide and others that you may be studying in the lab. We need to dilute the yogurt before we put it on the microscope slide. We'll use a PBS liquid, phosphate buffered saline, as the diluent to thin out the yogurt. That helps us see the bacteria with the microscope. What is phosphate buffered saline, PBS? A buffer solution is capable of balancing the pH of a sample, which is important because all organisms exist in a very narrow pH range. PBS has phosphoric acid to make the pH more acidic and sodium hydroxide to make the pH more alkaline, which helps to balance pH. Start by placing one milliliter of the diluent into a test tube using a pipette. What is a pipette? A pipette dispenses a measured volume of liquid. This picture shows a transfer pipette, which has a bulb to suck in liquids and force them out. This pipette also has graduations lines on the tubular section to measure the exact amount that's being suctioned. This is an inoculation loop, a small loop of wire used to collect samples. We'll use it to place a small amount of yogurt into the test tube with the diluent. Start by sterilizing the inoculation loop in the flame of the Bunsen burner. Hold it directly in the flame until it glows red hot. Work close to the Bunsen burner. Remember to always work close to the Bunsen burner, about one foot away. This will prevent contamination of your sample by microorganisms in the air. After it has cooled down, use the loop to obtain a small sample of yogurt from the suspect container. To get a good sample, reach deep into the container or thoroughly mix the yogurt first. Place the yogurt sample into the previously measured diluent, PBS. Now, gently shake the test tube for 5 to 10 seconds to thoroughly mix the yogurt sample throughout the diluent. Use the inoculation loop to transfer a small amount of sample from the test tube to your prepared slide. Sterilize the inoculating loop again in the flame of the Bunsen burner. Hold it directly in the flame until it glows red hot. Transfer a small amount of sample from the test tube to our prepared slide. Place two loops full from the sample onto the slide. Tilt the slide to spread the dropout slightly, about the size of a penny. Now we'll heat fix the slide. This prevents the bacteria from being washed away when we begin the staining process. Place the slide in a clasp, such as a clothespin, and pass it over the flame of the Bunsen burner. Be careful not to put it directly in the flame. We don't want to burn the sample. Just dry it out so bacteria won't wash off. What happens if the sample is overheated? The proteins in the cells denature, causing the bacterial cells to change shape. This may lead to faulty staining. Hold the slide over the flame to dry it out. Now we begin the staining process. After the staining is complete, we can look at these slides using a microscope. We use four chemicals to stain a slide. We apply them in a specific order and rinse the slide off under slow running water in between each chemical. The first is crystal violet. This is our purple stain, which will indicate gram-positive bacteria. What is crystal violet? It is a violet-colored dye. The dye penetrates the cells of gram-positive as well as gram-negative microorganisms. This happens because components in the dye form positively charged ions that associate with negatively charged components in cell walls. Using the dropper, squeeze out enough drops to cover your sample. Let that sit for 60 seconds. Now rinse it under slow running water. Now use the bottle of Graham's iodine. 
Gram's iodine will fix the dye to the cell walls of the bacteria and make it permanent. What is Gram's iodine? Gram's iodine is a solution used in the Gram staining procedure. Iodine, I, interacts with the crystal violet, CV, that has associated with cell components to form a bigger complex, CVI. This complex becomes trapped in the cell membrane. Squeeze several drops onto the sample, enough to cover it completely. Let that sit for 60 seconds. Now, rinse it under slow running water. Now we are going to use the alcohol solution. This will wash off the excess dye, leaving only the dye fixed to the bacteria. What is the function of the 95% alcohol solution? The alcohol solution will remove the CVI complex from the cells of the gram-negative organisms because of their thinner cell membranes. It also removes excess CV from gram-positive organisms if that CV has not formed the CVI complex. Use the alcohol dropper to cover the sample in alcohol. Let the alcohol sit for 30 seconds. Time is very important in this step. Don't let the alcohol sit for more than 30 seconds. Now, rinse it off under slow running water. You now have stained the gram-positive bacteria purple. The next and final step will stain the remaining bacteria pink. These bacteria are gram-negative. What is safranine? It is a pink-colored dye that stains cells that have been decolorized after the alcohol wash. Since gram-negative microorganisms no longer have any stain after being washed with alcohol, they take up the pink stain at this stage. Use the dropper to cover the slide with safranine. Let that sit for 60 seconds. Now, rinse it under slow running water. Now our slide is ready, but it is still wet. To dry it off, place it between two sheets of highly absorbent bibulous paper. Gently press the paper down a few times to blot the water off the slide. Good job! You now have one slide ready to look at under the microscope. Try doing the next one on your own. You can always click on the hint button if you need help remembering which step comes next. Notice the timer and the two buttons next to it. These buttons let you decide how long to wait for a stain before rinsing. Remember, you can click the hint button at the bottom right for help. Click next and begin gram staining on your own. Good job! You completed gram staining a slide on your own. Congratulations! Here's what we found under the microscope. The image on the left shows only the desirable type of gram-positive bacteria and no sign of gram-negative bacteria. The one on the right is contaminated. Notice the pink-stained bacteria. Those are gram-negative. These contaminants include undesirable bacteria that could be harmful. Look at all those gram-negative bacteria. It's a good thing we caught this before the product shipped. Now we will need to do some investigating to determine how the yogurt became contaminated 
and identify the exact strain of bacteria that contaminated the yogurt.